Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Maria Pavlitska and here we are going to explore the world of myths, urban legends, lores and all things supernatural. If you are interested in those topics, feel free to subscribe. Today we are going to talk about Shinigami. Does a watch Shinigami ring a bell? Well, it might if you are interested in anime. But have you ever wondered where Shinigami come from? When I first started my research about Shinigami, I did what a person does when they don't know what they came upon. So I looked it up in a book about Japanese mythology and I was kind of surprised because, you know, I didn't find anything. Not a mention, not a footnote, not a word. Then I went to Wikipedia, but it was a long, long time ago and I didn't learn much. But the Shinigami mystery has stayed with me since then. I picked up my research when I was writing my PhD thesis, but then I was watching a lot of anime for my research, of course, and a lot more questions arose. What questions? Uh, well, does Shinigami really only eat apples? Or maybe they use chainsaw to kill people? Do they make deals with people? Or maybe they eat them or trap them somewhere? Do they shorten them li their lives? Do they write their names in notebook? Who knows? In early days, I found a theory that connects Shinigami with the, the Grim Reaper, aka the Death. You may know him or her, of course, the Grim Reaper, because as you probably know, the Death isn't always portrayed as a male. Depends on the language you use, uh, because in some languages, the word dead is feminine, like for example, in French, and in the other languages, it's masculine. For example, in German. But it's not why we are here today, so let's move into the Grim Reaper theory. Researchers say that maybe Japanese people took the image of the Grim Reaper and just use it in their culture. But was it really that simple? So, in order to answer that, we have to ask one important question. What question do you ask? Well, is there any god of death in Japan? In order to find out, we have to go back to the beginning. To the beginning of time in Japanese mythology. So we have to pick up a book called Kojiki, or the Record of Ancient Matters. It's the oldest religious book in Japan, or at least it's the oldest official, or the oldest known. We'll focus on the divine couple that were sent to Earth in order to make it strong and stable. Their names were Izanami and Izanagi. So they started by getting married, but their first marriage failed. Not because they were basically siblings, no. It was because the lady Izanami spoke first and it was terrible. So what happened when the first marriage wasn't, you know, proper? Um, well, they bore defective children, like the island made of foam. So, not very useful, not very safe, as you probably see. What did they do? They got married again, and this time they did it properly. So, Izanagi, the man, spoke first, and everything was good. So, they went back to their creation. Izanami bore a lot of children, I mean, a lot of them, and every one of them had their own responsibility. But sadly, the last child that they had together, it was a god of fire. And when he was being born, he burned his mother's womb and she sadly passed away. Izanagi was really mad, uh, so mad that he killed his son and he sliced him with a sword and then he went to look for his wife. So Izanami went to the cave where he can enter the afterlife or the underworld. And he met his wife. He said to her, honey, please come back to me. No, I'm joking. He was more like, our task is not done yet. You have to come back to me. So Izanami was like, okay, I'll go see what I can do for you, but you have to wait there and don't go inside. I have to speak with the gods of Underworld and I will come back and let you know. But don't come inside, don't touch anything, just wait, be patient. So she went to meet the gods of the Underworld or the kings of the Underworld and 
Izanagi, who was supposed to wait, of course, got impatient and he went up inside to check out what's inside, of course. So he saw her body, you know, rotting, disgusting, probably smelling like hell, swarming with worms, etc. And he was really gross out, so he took off. But you have to remember that Izanami was the first one to die, so Izanagi hadn't had any experience with dead bodies before. So Izanami wasn't having it, she was beyond pissed because for once her husband ignored her and he went inside. But what's more, he was disgusted by her appearance. But Izanami was a fierce woman and she wasn't having it, so she sent three hacks of darkness after her husband and these hacks of darkness were chasing him and he was able to fool them like a fairy tale princess he was throwing things behind him and these things turned into obstacles and it stopped the hacks of darkness finally izanami herself caught up with her husband and she started screaming at him so he separated himself from her and they went into the screaming match izanami was mad so she told her husband that she would make sure that every day thousands of people would die. Izanagi was like, yeah honey, you do that, but I will make sure that 1,500 people will be born every day. And after that, they separated and they never see each other again. But if we take a look at today's birth rate in Japan, we can see that Izanami is winning. So in the story, we find out why people are born and why they die. And it's basically because two gods were mad at each other. Fun, right? So you are probably wondering, why am I telling you a story that happened a long, long time ago? Well, some researchers believe that because Izanami was the first one to die, she became a personification of death, a goddess of death and that would make her the first Shinigami. The bit about Izanami and Izanagi told us about life and death and what happened to people when they die and where do they go, but the afterlife and the construction of the underworld is a huge topic and we will not be talking about this today, but I hope one day we will have a discussion about that. But now let's move into the Shinigami lore. Let's take a look at the word Shinigami. We can divide it into two words, Shini and Gami. And Shini means death in Japanese and Gami is derived for the, from the word Kami, which means God. So if we put it together, we got Shinigami, which means God of death. The word Shinigami was used in Japanese doll theater and it was used to describe ghosts of dead people that possess humans and sometimes this word referred to double suicide. We have one interesting tale of Shinigami and it was told in Ehon Hyaku Monogatari. So the story goes that there was a man who was about to commit suicide because he was unhappy with his life. And when he was about to do it, the Shinigami appeared. And the Shinigami was like, hey dude, don't do that, it's not your time. And the man was like, okay, Shinigami, I guess I won't do that then. So Shinigami started chatting with the guy and Shinigami told the guy that the human life is measured by the length of the candle. And the candle is burn burning all the time. Every person on earth has their own candle. So the friendly Shinigami teaches the guy how to banish a Shinigami, but here's a trick. You know, uh, because when someone's dying, the Shinigami appears, of course, but uh, if the someone who's dying is lying in the bed and Shinigami appears by the head of the bed, no, well, it's, it's game over. But if Shinigami appears by the foot, then it can be banished. So the man used his knowledge. He became very successful doctor and he became very rich, but also really greedy. 
And one day he got a client and this client was really, really rich. So of course the man took the job. But when he came to the dying man, he saw that Shinigami appeared by his head. So nothing could be done. But the man wasn't having it, you know, he decided to trick the Shinigami. So he turned the bed around. So the Shinigami was now located uh, by this man's foot. So he banished the Shinigami and the rich guy left. So Shinigami wasn't happy with this guy. So one day Shinigami invited him over and showed him a room filled with candles. And Shinigami told the man, look, your candle was shortened because of what you did. So, of course, the guy was devastated. But Shinigami told him, that's okay, we can fix it. Uh, take your wax, take your candle wick and move it to another candle so you can prolong your life. So, of course, the guy tried to do just that. And he failed because Shinigami was just playing him. And the guy died. The end. So let's talk about creatures that are similar to Shinigami and also appear in Japanese folklore. We have Mara and Mara is a demon, let's say, and this demon makes people wanna die. So if this Mara guy or girl possess a human, the person suddenly feels the need to commit a suicide and sometimes this need is explained as Shinigami influence. And in some writings, this Mara creature is described as the one that decides the time of people's death. So other creatures that are considered a type of Shinigami are Buddhist king of hell, Yama, and his servants, ox head and horse face. So let's start with this Yama guy. Yama is king of hell in Buddhist beliefs. He's also judge of the souls and he manages the cycle of the afterlife. And in Japan, he's called Enma and you may know him if you watch Dragon Ball. He was there and he was called Enma Dayo. So is Yama Shinigami? Well, he's got connections to the afterlife. Yeah, dude basically rules it, but uh, does he really go out to Earth and mess with people? Well, no, we don't know that. Moving on to the next creatures. Let's talk about Oxhead and Horseface. But firstly, we have to find out what they are. Well, they are Oni. And what is Oni? So, Oni appear in Japanese folklore as early as in 8th century. They are described as large, usually male, humanoid creatures with yellow, red, blue or black face and with horns growing from their heads. They are dangerous to people and they are described as the presence that exclude human nature. There are a few exceptions, but Oni are usually negative characters and they are also connected to Buddhist description of hell. Oni are described as this ominous presence and it's believed that they got angry really, really fast. According to researcher Michael Duran Foster, Oni are personification of the others, so they are used to describe the marginalized group. They live in wilderness, usually in the mountains, and this location connects them to the underworld. Why? Because uh, there were times when Japanese people buried their dead in the mountains, in the caves. Oni are also accused of cannibalism, or rather eating people because cannibalism suggests that they eat their own species. We know now what Oni are, and our friends Oxhead and Horseface are Oni. So let's talk about them a little bit. Who are they? According to Chinese beliefs, these two are guardians of the underworld. I believe their names are rather self-explanatory, but they do have human bodies. And they are the first ones that a soul meets if the soul enters the afterlife. So it's said that they escort the soul to the courts of hell where the soul is judged and its fate is decided based on the things that the soul did in the life. 
so it's another lead that may suggest that Shinigami have something to do with guiding the death or deciding their fate, but there's no mention about suicide though. So let's take a look at a few mentions about Shinigami in Japanese art, in Hoei and that's Japanese era, in a performance called Shinchu Nimai Soshi, there is a mention about a god of death. This play is about a man and a woman who were invited towards death. So in this play we can find a quote about the god of death and it's translated to English as the road of the god of death leads towards whatever that means. And we have another play that's called Shinchuha Hakori no Sakuritsu and it's about a man and a woman that are about to commit suicide and there is a mention about Shinigami influence and this lady who's about to commit suicide says the fleetingness of light lured by the god of death but uh, we don't know if the couple went with the suicide because they were influenced by Shinigami or maybe this Shinigami was used as the metaphor of their fate. In another performance called The Love Suicide in Amjima, there is an expression of a person possessed by a god of death. In classical Edo period literature, there are mentions about people who are possessed by the god of death. In a story called Shinigami, there is a creature who's a spirit of the deceased person and this spirit has bad intention. So if this creature mingles with people who also have bad intention and they find themselves in the place where tragedy happened, they may feel the need to commit suicide or to die. Similar to this, there were a creature called Itsuki who was making people wanna die and especially wanna die by hanging. It was it's think, I think. In the essay Shonzan Chomun Kishu by Miyoshi Chonzan, there is a story about a sex worker who was possessed by Shinigami and who invited a man to commit double suicide. In Kabuki play Mekarangaya Omega Kagatobi, there is a story about a Shinigami who invites people's minds and reminds them about their wrongdoings and because of this memories, they want to die. Those creatures that I described right now are sometimes uh, considered yurei, which are ghosts, not Shinigami. Uh, after the war, Shinigami became more popular in folk beliefs. For example, according to Morris of Miyajima in Komato Prefecture, if you are going to take care of someone at night and you go out at night and you come back home also at night, you have to eat a bowl of rice or drink a cup of tea before you go to sleep or if you don't do that, the Shinigami will visit you. Sounds scary. In Hamamatsu area, it's believed that Shinigami would possess people and they will lead them to crossroads, mountains, seas and to the places where tragedy happened. It's believed that in those places the dead would have a dead turn and it basically means that they can't ascend if no one dies there after them, even if they were given proper services after their death. And because of that, it's said that alive people would be invited there to join the dead in death. Also, there is another superstition connected to the Buddhist uh, celebration called Higan. During the celebration, it's ordinary to visit graves during sunset or at noon. But if you do that in Okayama prefecture, um, it's not a good idea because it's believed if you visit the grave in the sunset and you didn't do that before e during this holiday, you will be possessed by Shinigami. But you can avoid that. Uh, and in order to avoid that, you have to visit the grave again during sunrise. It's also believed that if person dies and there's no one to defy them, they will wander the earth and they will invite people to join them in death. 
So now in popular culture, Shinigami gain a lot of popularity. We have few famous uh, Shinigami and they are different from each other. For example, we have Ryuk in Death Note, who eats only apples and he's a trickster basically. And we also have uh, Ichigo from Bleach, for example, and he's more like a guardian, he's protector. So what do we learn today? We don't know how to banish Shinigami because the spell that friendly Shinigami gave to the man was never written. So what can we do? Firstly, let's consider if we have to run from Shinigami. Well, if we are dead, probably no, because we may end as angry spirit. But if we are alive, we should probably run. So what to do if you meet Shinigami? Well, firstly, don't engage. And if you have to engage, maybe don't make a deal with them. But if you have to make deal with them, try not to cross them. They will know. Also, it wouldn't hurt to eat a bowl of rice or drink a cup of tea before going to bed. Don't go to places where tragedy happened, even if the spirit tells you so. Avoid shady creatures with notebooks, apple chainsaws, swords, and everything that's suspicious. Also, don't, don't go to the cemetery during sunrise, sunset, noon. Maybe go at midnight. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I hope you will join me again sometime. Please hit like button, don't be shy and drop a comment. Follow me on social media, subscribe to my channel and have a nice day.